Hi there, my name is Timo and this is a wooden violin. So I recently started playing the violin and find it quite cool. <laughs> it's a fun hobby and I also have a 3D printer at home. So I had this idea of trying to 3D print my own violin. This is an 80 year old one, an actual one, as you would you know, normally play it. And what I ended up with, what I ended up with in this project is this 3D print violin. It's made out of plastic, um, feels different. Yeah, and what we're gonna talk about in this video is how I built this violin. The entire creation process basically starts with modeling, then slicing, printing it, painting, assembly, and then eventually also a sound test. So you're gonna hear towards the end of this video how the violin, the printed one, sounds. It's just one month old now, and yeah, I'm excited to show it to you. I used the free open source software Blender for modeling. The model is based on a blueprint that's available on the internet of a Stradivarius violin called Messia. It's one of the really well preserved ones and having that blueprint available helped quite a lot. So some of the tricky parts in the modeling process were the scroll, that's this area up here which you can see right now, um, simply because it has a lot of curvatures into all kinds of directions and getting kind of like a clean mesh of that part um, took a little bit of time. And the second somewhat tricky part was getting the violin's body curvature right. So you can see the violin has like this belly on, to on the top and at the bottom. And yeah, that curvature like took a little bit of time as well. So modeling was around about 12 hours and the output of that step in the creation process was essentially a 3D model of the violin. The next step after modeling the violin is to slice it, which means pretty much getting it ready for the print. So I sliced the violin into a number of different components, which I'm just going to enumerate quickly. They are the tailpiece, the fingerboard, nut, then a neck, volute, pack box, nape. So all parts of the print group scroll. Then the base bar, the saddle, the back plate, which I printed in two pieces, the blocks, front plate, ribs, and lastly the sound post. In total, that's 31 printed pieces, and the total weight of them is a little bit less than 700 grams. So that's actually a lot heavier than uh, a violin normally is. I think normally they're around about 400 grams, so actually pretty lightweight. After slicing all the parts, the next step was to use the Ender 3 Pro and print them. Printing time was 110 hours in total for all pieces combined, but in reality, because of failed prints and the clock printer nozzle, it took a little bit longer, but eventually all the parts were there and ready to be assembled. It's also worth mentioning that not every piece of the violin can be printed. So there's a couple of pieces like the pegs and um, the fine tuners, for example, and the strings themselves, obviously, that were not possible to be printed. Assembling the parts was a little bit harder than I had expected because some of them were not fitting exactly. At some point I attached the neck of the violin and it was a little bit tilted to the side, so that was definitely suboptimal and looked a little bit weird. So uh, it took a bit of time and eventually worked. I put some varnish on top, cream colored varnish, um, to make it like give, give it this nice cream color and painted the black parts in black. Before putting the front plate on, I put a little paper slip inside, which my sister kindly painted for me. It's, it's nice in violins to really have it inside, which is an indicator for who built the violin and in which year. So she sent this one over via mail and I put it inside. It was quite cool from her side, I would say. And I want to say thank you. Yeah, and after putting the front plate on top, the violin was pretty much ready to be played. And before playing it, one has to tune it. So I put the strings on and that was honestly quite a moment of stress because I was not too sure. I did have to think about it. The strings are under quite some tension here. Um, as you tighten the pegs up here, you apply the tension to the strings. And the forces that you're gonna see is first, this part is gonna be pulled forward. Then this part, this is the uh, bridge. It's gonna be pushed down by the strings. And here the entire neck is gonna be pulled forward slash downwards. So there's a lot of force on it. And I was not too sure whether it would break. Uh, fortunately, it didn't break. But I'm still not too confident. I have to say for the next version, I would print this uh, neck part a little bit stronger because it, it bends over very slightly. So I'm a little bit worried about that part, but in the end, anyway, it worked. So the violin is, is tunable and then consequently also playable. And yeah, I'm already gonna hear how it sounds when a professional plays it. So Misha kindly um, played the violin for me. And yeah, here's a sample of him playing.
So when I work on a project like that, people would usually ask how long did it take? And I can never answer that accurately. So this time I learned from past experience and actually tracked the working time exactly. It took uh, 42 hours to, from start to finish modeling everything uh, until the violin was ready. And yeah, that's for a 3D printing project for my standards quite long. So it was quite a big project and I really enjoyed working on it. And um, how much it, would the violin cost? It's hard to answer. The material itself is fairly cheap. The plastic costs around about 25 euros. Um, then the uh, non-printed components, maybe another 25. And then the working time, well, that depends on how much one charges per hour. But maybe the violin would be worth, I would say, 4,000 euros or so. It's just my, my own guess. I mean, I'm not going to sell it. Yeah, could it be played? Like, could it be used as a real violin? I would say for a student, it's totally sufficient. It has this only problem that the neck is a little bit too weak, so I don't want to keep it tuned for many hours. But in a second version, I would add a metal bar over here or make this part a little bit stronger in general. And then I think it could definitely be used as a, as a real violin for practice and for playing. Um, it's, it sounds good. It's totally playable. So yes. Now that the violin is completed, the question is what's going to be the next big project? Probably a little bit too large. There's a blog post accompanying this video in which I'm sharing more technical details of the project. So if you're interested, you can check it out. That concludes this video and I'd like to thank you for watching it and wish you a great day.